Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan State Championship checking in team number 503, Hall of Fame. Team number 503, by the way, congratulations, 2021 Hall of Fame team coming in here. Uh, Frog Force, this team here, not only great on turns, but has a fantastic machine. Couple finalist awards in districts, but gotten really close. And right now, as we record this, uh, qualification matches are just done. They're the number three ranked team. Uh, so looking for big things here at MSC as well, too. So of course, we're gonna be going through the entire uh, robot here, covering the uh, cargo, indexer type area, shooter, climber. And I can't wait to talk more about this on Behind the Bumper. So to help me speak more about this, I have uh, Luca, Lexi, Cameron, and Arsene. And keep in mind everything we go through on the spot. It's a great machine. I can't wait to show you more. Come up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. So let's start out on the intake. Talk to me a little bit more about uh, not just, of course, what it is, but like how did you come up with this design and any changes that you might have made throughout the season too? Right, okay, so first we started with our intake from last year. We also had a similar four bar design, um, similar to what we have this year. Uh, so if you wanna fold it down real quick. So as you can see, it folds down and then it folds back up as well. And so we do this throughout the course of the match in order to prevent defense from hurting our intake. Um, another thing we have is we have these cool mechanum wheels and these star wheels, which allow us to pick up against the wall. Um, they're very helpful. We're able to drive along the wall and just pick up all the balls against the wall. Um, yeah, uh, those weren't there originally. Originally we had a big roller with a bunch of different wheels. Sure. But, um, we found that this works the best and we're able to pick up against the wall. When you guys were looking from an intake on this, it's obviously a very compliant intake, right? right. Uh, from your design-wise, why, why did this type of intake work best for your team? So we wanted our intake to be a little compliant because we wanted to be able to take hits without our intake breaking. Sure. We thought that if our intake was too static, it might snap or something. These bars have only snapped like twice um, in competition total, so um, they're pretty durable. Um, so yeah, the flex allows us to take defense. And Lucas, as we go into your index area, why don't we put in that piece of cargo, we'll take a look just how that process works and then yep. talk to me more about your bottom index area. So our bottom indexer, it has roller wheels on both sides. Um, we're allowed, <clears throat> we intake the ball really fast as you can see by that. Um, our goal was speed with this indexer. So we designed it with speed in mind. We have a Neo motor running it. And so that, we, we also geared it up very fast. So our goal is just get the ball in and out as soon as possible. So we intake the ball and index it really fast. Um, yeah. Well, let's pass it off to Lexi. She's gonna cover the next part. So we go into your uh, tower area and that handoff happens. And then talk to me a little bit more about your shooter too. Yeah, so moving right along, we have our turret and uptake system. So our robot is a turret on a swerve and we have this big gear right here which can rotate around it has approximately 200 degrees of motion from there the ball will get fed up into it these belts will take it up into the shooter system we had some problems in the past with keeping these belts on the actual pulleys because we have a lot of compression and so the ball would like to pull it off with it so we have actually gone through several different designs the pulleys that we have on the belts are 3d printed they're custom they've gone through many iterations we came up with this wide design we like it the best we also Created, we bought belts that have a that have bigger teeth so that they can grip better and they are less likely to slip off. You can see also that we have some compliant wheels on the bottom rollers, and those allow us to keep the belt from flipping off because it has something to trap it from either side. So that's been really convenient. We have also wanted to make this very very fast so that our drivers 
will always have it ready to shoot and that it can keep up with them. So we have gone through several changes with that, some gearing changes. We recently changed the motor back here from a bag motor to a 775 so that it was able to go fast enough to keep up with them. You can also see that this right here is a nice custom made metal gear that we have so that we could have the turret motion that we wanted and we could fit everything packaging wise. And then moving right up into the shooter. Do you want to move into the shooter? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> moving right up into the shooter. This is a pretty standard design. It's just a wheel, a set of wheels with a backing. And then we added some anti-backspin rollers right here, which allows the shot to be way more consistent than it was before. That was something that we did during the season and it's really improved our precision and accuracy. We also changed the side plates from quarter inch aluminum to quarter inch polycarbon. That helped us to save a lot of weight. And we found that that really helped out our team a lot. Question to ask you from a packaging standpoint here. So your uh, turret uh, actually is this entire assembly, right? It actually starts down here. So we've seen a lot of teams do it from here, uh, but your team has chosen to go one, a more of a tall shooter, which I really like a lot, I think from a trajectory you get out of that. But talk to me a little bit more, just a design perspective, why you went this route. So we had a couple of reasons why we chose for this. For starters, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have all of this turreting mechanism way high up, because if we did, that would make the robot very top heavy. And especially with the wire cable bundle that you have to drive over in the field. It's like a very big speed bump and we do not want our robot to tip over. That is a very scary yeah. thing. It's also very nice because it helps our balls to, to feed consistently. We found back in Infinite Recharge when we had a turreting system that because if the ball was being fed up and it was shooting here, then it would already have a bit of a roll on it and then it would go this way versus if it was pointed that way, then it would kind of roll this way and this way. So because of the feeding, giving it an angle, it kind of shot inconsistently. So this really helps with shot consistency. So we really like this design. Before we go to the climber, actually, let's pass over the camera and talk a little bit more about vision uh, on your robot, and then we'll go back to climber. But uh, talk to me about just how your team is utilizing vision. What kind of feedback are you getting uh, from it, and how is it impacting uh, your shot and uh, other parts of your robot, too, clearly? Yeah, sure. So our, our vision and our control system was really paramount to our success this season. And that comes in the form of the fact that we earned the autonomous award and two control awards at our qualifiers. Um, and so that just demonstrates We've got a pretty advanced sensor system, the most advanced we've ever had on our team. And it comes down to, we have four cameras on the robot. We have our limelight, pretty standard. Um, then we have our driver camera, as well as we have a Jetson running a custom trained neural network, running our cargo detection. So that allows for driver assist and really precise autons, even if our path gets messed up. Um, so that's been a huge success for us this year and a really big advancement. And then we also have we're running a pixie cam down inside of our indexer for automatic ball ejection. Um, and then along with that, we've got two beam brake sensors. So we're indexing the cargo automatically. Sure. And the robot knows when we're ready to shoot. And uh, yeah. With that pixie cam, are you also doing color sensing with that too? Yes, that's how we use the pixie cam for the color detection for ejection. And we also have a beam brake down there. So it's like double verified, yeah. so we have redundancy So there. all it does, if the wrong color comes in, it's just gonna reject that right yep. away, essentially. Yeah. Yep, and uh, a really big thing this year was having this automation through all of these systems, yeah. but also having manual overrides. So for any system you could give me, we have a manual override, yeah. so for our index. I'm sure your drive team thanks you for that, yeah. by the way. Yep, definitely. Um, and that goes for the climb, too. So we've got the climb fully automated as well, but also you can bail out um, so that's helped us in a lot of scenarios, is having that automation to make everything so much easier, but then also having the manual overrides to just swap back and forth if necessary. Well, let's go into the climber. I'll let Lexi talk a little bit first uh, about the climber itself, and then if you want to jump back in and talk about any more automation, we can do that too. So moving right along to our climbers, we have two sets of hooks. We have our inner hooks right here. They are fixed and they're what allow us to hold on to the bar while we are going between bars. And then we have these outer hooks here which can extend up and down and they can also pneumatically actuate back and forth. So if Cameron would like to show us our climbing sequence. A reminder for the consumer field. Please have a representative down on the 
pressure right here would be going up and pulling itself up to the mid-rung, and then it would latch onto the fixed hooks. And then now it would go back, and they could go all the way up and grab onto the high bar and then bring it back and latch back onto the fixed hooks. And then we could do that again for the traversal. We also have the seat belts here, which are for safety and also to make sure that they, the hooks only go up when we are ready for them to go and we always latch them before every match. We like to say that we buckle up for safety. We also have gone through several iterations with this climber. One thing that we have worked on a lot is these hooks and this hook design. Originally, the hook design was more square, and as time has gone on, we've rounded it off more and more. We found that it's been better for us to be able to latch onto the bar, and it has helped us with climbing in general. As, as we wrap up this, uh, is there anything, I know you mentioned it's a fully automated climb. Anything else you want to add in uh, to that as well? Um, yeah, so with our climb, we've got limit switches on our fixed hooks. So our, our climb sequence is a one button sequence. You have one button to just advance to the next bar and we're running smart motion control on our climb motors. Sure. That's a, something we implemented this past week. Yeah. Um, and it's made our climbing a lot smoother. And it also, since we're running with specific set points, we know when we're at the right spot and then we use the limit switches to know if we're on the hook. So really, all the driver has to do is just advance to the next bar once we're good, and then, um, yeah. So at this point, how quick is your climb? We have, we have it automatic in around 18 seconds. Manual, we can go faster. It's just less uh, reliable, obviously. Yeah. So but if you got to push it, you know, playoff time, it, you got to do it. Yeah, like, and that's what we do. If if we are running out of time, if we got two seconds left, and we need to jump off to the traversal, we'll do it. Perfect. Let's wrap up to talk about custom circuitry in your robot. RC is going to cover a little bit more about that, and I think we got a little uh, model to show as well, too, with it. Yeah, so with all the sensors that Cameron talked about, uh, we've had to kind of expand our power distribution because the PDP obviously does not have enough ports for all of our needs, and we still use the old CTRE PDP at this time. But even then, not enough ports, even on the new one. So what we've done here is we've made this custom circuit board completely designed by us. We call it the Sensor Distribution Board, or SDB for short. And basically what it does is it takes in power right here, just 12 volt from a single port on the PDP, and it distributes it to all of these ports here with a little automotive fuse and a light to indicate if that fuse is blown. That way, if for whatever reason, one of the sensor's shorts on the robot, which can happen a lot because they're kind of tiny 22 gauge wires, the entire sensor network will not go down and instead just that sensor will stop working. So then we can quickly look at the light, see that it's out, swap the fuse and be ready for the next match. So the other feature of this was to take the output of some of our sensors, which was 12 volt output, specifically these uh, Rockwell Automation single side brake beam sensors right here that we decided to use for ball detection. These were Something that output 12 volt, because they're meant for more of like an automotive uh, use case, but they, they output 12 volt, which the RoboRio does not actually take in as like an input. So we've put these two little read relays here to step that down to five volt, something safe for the Rio, so that we can actually use those and get that input. And we've been playing around with these custom circuit boards for a while now, it started kind of during the summer, but this is the most complex one we've ever built. And at this point, you know, we completely designed it, completely manufactured it, and we want to continue doing this because it's nice to have a circuit for our personal needs that's also cheaper than the alternatives. Uh, is there documentation for this anywhere? Should our teams want to check it out? Um, we have some documentation in kind of a packet right now that sure. we give out to judges at, like, competitions. At the moment, it's not really something available to the other teams because it's still in its very early stages yeah. and definitely has things to improve. Like these connectors right here are honestly kind of garbage. Throughout competition, they'll break or whatnot, or they'll get ripped out of the circuit board. So in the future, I'd like to improve that with some standardized connector family. Uh, but if we can keep iterating on the design and make something for all teams to use, we'd love to release documentation about it, and we'd love to teach other teams to do it, because it really is a great experience for anyone looking to really get into electronics and really get into that you know, company 
team aspect. Yeah, and we'll look forward hopefully to see some documentation later because I, it's a great thing and I can't wait to see the iterations for it as well too. Well, 503 Frog Force, thanks for taking the time. Speak with us about your robot, uh, different cool stuff you're doing. As mentioned before, we're filming this right before line selection, so we wish you best of luck going into uh, playoffs and uh, world championships coming up too, so can't wait to see more of your team. Thanks a lot for taking the time. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.